Welcome to the newest episode of Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. I'm your host, Jason Fraley, picking the brains of the top filmmakers, musicians, and artists of our time. Today marks exactly 20 years since the Christmas comedy classic Elf went into production on December 9th, 2002. I spoke to comedy legend Bob Newhart about his memories of playing Papa Elf across Will Ferrell, James Caan, and Ed Asner. We also discuss his iconic TV sitcom career from The Bob Newhart Show to Newhart and even his experience voicing Bernard in Disney's animated classic The Rescuers. Hey, Mr. Bob Newhart. Hey, thank you for joining us on WTOP in Washington, D.C. Hi, Jason. Hi. Where are you calling us from? Is it Los Angeles? L.A., yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we really, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. It's not every day we get to talk to a legend like yourself. This is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, I, I wanted to, to we were t- the reason we're talking, we should tell our listeners, is because uh, 20 years ago on December 9th, it'll mark 20 years since Elf went into production. And, uh, it, and you know, two decades later, it is a bona fide holiday classic i think it was the second it came out an, in- an instant classic of course you played papa elf buddy's adopted dad and the narrator of the whole thing but uh what was your reaction the very first time you read the script like could you tell it was sparkling even on the page well i i read it and uh <clears throat> i told my wife i said i think this is going to be a perennial i, I think this is going to be uh, the same as Miracle on 34th Street. It's just, it was warm. It, it was uh, well-written, uh, well-directed, John Favreau. And um, Will I, Will was marvelous. I mean, it could have been, except for John and Will, it, it could have been just like a jerk, you know? <laughs> a, a, guy, a guy who... You dismiss him right away, but with with Will's charm, you believed him and and you wanted him to succeed, and that that really is what made the what made it work. Oh, it, that's such a good point because on the page, you know, in a, if it was a different performance, it, it could it could have totally uh, flopped or felt over the top or whatever. But exactly. Will Ferrell is so lovable as Buddy the Elf, and, and do you think it's sort of that fish out of water innocence? You know, like he he just he when he when he's shouting Santa, oh my God, I know him. You you believe that he's actually excited. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but do you think? Do you what? What do you what, what was Will Ferrell like that? You know, did he stay in character on set? Was he that bright-eyed, bushy-tailed buddy even when the cameras weren't rolling? Oh yeah, he was. He was. Um, he he did a very interesting thing because um, all those years on uh, on Saturday Night Live, you know, that sketch acting and. and yeah. This isn't sketch acting. This this is this is acting, uh, and there are two different forms of acting. And uh, sketch is much broader. And uh, and Will was able to make that that transition. Absolutely, he always said, "Smiling is my favorite," and I think it, it is for all of us too. Every time we watch the movie, we can't help but smile. Um, and then I guess more of a bittersweet. No, now, uh, you know, because James Caan just passed away. Um, you know, he yeah. he's so good in the movie as Walter Hobbs, sort of that big city publisher who doesn't realize he's Buddy's biological father. And ju- I mean, I guess, uh, what? Why do you any memories of working with with Jimmy Caan, uh, e- e- either on on Elf or or you know, I'm sure you you knew him for, for well, years. I remember when we went, <clears throat> I took uh, I took several of my grand grandkids along with my wife and my daughter. And we went to um, a screening of it. And uh, and we were laughing and having a great time. And then um, Jim, Jimmy Conn was there with his, uh, with his wife. And um, so it came to, you know, because I'm all pretty much in the front part of the movie. So my final scene, I said, well, we got up and started to leave. I said, well, that's all I'm in. <laughs> and James Conn, did he say, wait a minute, you got to watch my scene. Stick no, around. Yeah, he laughed. <laughs> did you actually leave or did you sit right back down? <laughs> we sat back down. <laughs> that was nice of you. <laughs> oh, that's great. But do you think they're, they're sort of 
banter where like why do you think it worked do you think because will ferrell is so exuberant but then james Conn, i guess i guess he's sort of the straight man i guess but like what what about why do you think their banter works so well um i think it was it's time the, the message was warm and and people wanted to believe in it and they, and they just needed 20 years ago as, as they do today they <laughs> because they keep showing it and showing it. People need that that charming, wonderful thing about the the, the Christmas spirit and its way of uh, powering the sleigh. Um, yes, singing loud enough for all to hear, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Spread, spreading Christmas cheer. Uh, I, I agree with you when you say you think it's going to be a perennial. It'll be around forever like a miracle on 34th Street or, you know, It's a Wonderful Life. Every year people will watch it. Um, did you, I, I assume it was intentional, but every time I watch it and and Buddy has Buddy has his all his lost moment there on the snowy bridge. Was is that are they trying to do an It's a Wonderful Life? You know, George Bailey on the bridge, and then instead of Clarence the Angel, it's sort of Santa's sleigh that snaps <laughs> out of it. But is are you guys going consciously going for an um, homage there? Uh I don't know. That's really up to John Favreau. Yeah. And and Will, if, if that's what they were going for. It's a it's a very nice touch. It really is a nice touch. And do you speaking of John Favreau, do you think he you know, a lot of times comedy directors don't get nearly as much credit for for pulling it off. But, you know, do, do you think John Favreau's contribution to that is, is still underrated? Everyone talks about Will Ferrell and you and the cast. But, I mean, John really pulled it all together. Yes, he did. He did. And then the next thing I saw John do, I forget. But it was this uh, highly technical movie. that, And, and he... He was able to pull that off also. So he's a he's a wonderful director. Yeah, this was before I mean I'd seen him acting in some stuff, obviously, but I think this this was before he directed Iron Man and launched that whole Marvel yeah. movie yeah, that is still right. going still going today. So Elf was before that, kind of got him going. Um, no, he, he's a great director. Um, so do, do you still have young fans coming up to you about Elf that, that maybe had never even seen, you know, any of the Bob Newhart show or any of that? Like, do they know you only as Buddy's narrator, Papa Elf? <laughs> well, when I, when I was on the road, uh, doing stand up, uh, occasionally I'll get a note saying, uh, my two sons are here. Could we come backstage? Uh, and they they'd like to meet Papa Elf, <laughs> and I say yeah okay, and so they come back, but they look at me like that's not Papa Elf, that's the that's a guy, you know. <laughs> Who's this guy? They don't know that you're the Bob Newhart. <laughs> they, no, they, well they don't know what what they what John did in the yeah. movie, and it, it, another example of how wise he was. It's what they call uh, force perception. Mm. And uh, all my scenes with Will, I'm 10 to 12 feet behind him. So right. that I, look, I look smaller. Right, and, right. That that force percep perspective stuff, like yeah. they, they did on Lord of the Rings and that kind of stuff for the Hobbit. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Wow, that that's a really cool camera angle. Uh, because tidbit. he wanted he wanted actors. He he didn't want um, tiny people. I think they're called today. Right, little little people. I think is what the phrase is now. But yeah, yeah, they wanted you know they they that way they could cast Bob you know Bob Newhart and you you could have you know the the famous legends of the past playing these roles. You know, you could get Ed Ed Asner. Any any memories of Ed Asner as Santa Claus? Like on on you know you, you're two legends getting to getting to share the screen there. But any Ed, any Santa memories with Ed on set? Well, as you know, Ed, Ed passed. Yeah, not too long ago, and. Um... Yeah, we were on the same lot. We were on the the Radford lot, which was Mary Tyler Moore mm -hmm. in our show, and also Seinfeld later on. Uh, so we'd see each other. We'd go to the commissary, and it was, hi, hi, Ed, hi, Bob. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'd have lunch, and um, it, it, there were great times. And now I read in the paper that the, the famous Radford lot which was, which was a 
I think it was a force. There was a Republic, Republic Studios lot originally, and they did a lot of westerns there. Uh, and I think it was a four star, and then then it became CBS, and um, there's a lot of a lot of history behind the the lot. My kids, you know, they come to rehearsals, and right out, outside our stage seventeen was the uh, the back lot of uh, of Gunsmoke. Wow, the, the western. Yeah. So they bring their cameras and they shoot their, their movies, you know, and they had this million dollar set. To, <laughs> to <use. laughs> your, um, your kids are like, hey, that's Marshall Bill and that's Miss Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right, yeah. that's great. That's great. But well, they, I, they shoot their home movies there and then we'd watch them and, and we, we loved it. We loved it. Oh, that's great. I want to go into more in, into your iconic sitcoms uh, before we run too. but real real before we even do that, I, I want to know, you know, uh, how you got into this whole comedy racket to begin with. I know you were born in Illinois in 1929. Whew, you're pushing the century mark. You're a, you, that is an accomplishment, my friend. Uh, 1993. Yeah, exactly. 93 years old. H happy 93. Let's keep it going. Uh, ha ha but yeah, like growing up, you know, what sort of stuff? I mean, this is before TV, obviously. Did, were there certain radio programs or co comedians that, you know, I want to know how you got into comedy to begin with. Well, I really, you know, I started as a stand-up comic. Mm -hmm. I was a stand-up comic. I made a, a comedy record in 1960, and it, it far beyond my wildest dreams. It, it took off and it became album of the year. That was called the Button Down Mind of Bob Newhart, right? No mind, yeah. And, and so from 1960 to uh, 1972, I was doing stand up. Um, and then um, Arthur Price from MTM came to me and he said, Would you like to do uh, television? I said, I'd love to do it because I'd like to get off the road <laughs> and be with my family. And um, so that that was how it how it originated, and uh, I still continued then until last year uh, doing stand up. So that's my first love, stand up. Oh, and you could see you could see it in all, in all your work, whether it was the TV shows or the. I, I know you did. Uh, you remember you played Major Major in the Mike Nichols film Catch Twenty Two, <laughs> right? Nineteen seventy. Uh, what was it like? I mean, he's also passed away. Uh, but um, man, what a comedy genius of a director! But I, I want to know, you know, your memories of Mike Nichols just at work as a director. I mean, that guy was genius. He. Oh yeah, no question about it. I, I was so uh, thrilled. To, to to be asked to be in a Mike Nichols film, uh, you know, along with Buck Henry and uh, all the great people, and Ellen Arkin, Dick Benjamin, Paula Prentice. Um, Martin Balsam with Psycho fame. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, I'm trying to be like, Was it um, Orson Welles in there too? No, I was thinking John. Yeah. John Voight. John, John Void, right, exactly, yeah. Anthony Perkins, but, uh, yeah. Pre, uh, Anthony uh, Perkins, yeah. Yeah, man. Orson Welles. Orson Welles. <laughs> Art Garfunkel. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many. Yeah, wow, that must have been an experience. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for diving into that real quick. But of course, we, have, you know, before we run, my listeners will absolutely destroy me if I don't ask you about the famous, you know, the, the sitcom days. Uh, so the Bob Newhart show runs 1972 to 78 on CBS, you know, playing that famous Chicago psychologist, Robert Hartley. Um, whenever, you know, whenever they rank the, you know, the WGA ranks the greatest TV shows, it always comes in very high on these lists. It's an iconic show, but... Do you have Do you have any personal, you know, favorite episodes? Is it Over the River and Through the Woods, or Death Be My Destiny, or do they sort of all run together? <laughs> yeah, there was. There was a, the, well, I love I love those. It was great writing, and then there was a show where um, <clears throat> my voice today. I don't know what's what's wrong with it, but uh, you sound good, sir. Keep it going. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I I walk in and uh, share. Sh uh, Carol says, uh, you, you have a new uh, a new patient. So I go in, 
and the guy is there with his dummy. And um, so I, 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 I said to him, you know, what, what can I do for you? And he said that Danny, that was, that was the dummy's name. <laughs> he said, Danny wants to go out on his own. <laughs> Which, of course, is impossible. <laughs> it's impossible because the guy who's telling, <laughs> telling me is, is, I mean, he's supplying the voice for Danny. <laughs> so it was wonderful to just do the takes, you know. That's hilarious. And <laughs> <laughs> howdy doody the but the, like a dummy just wants yeah, to exactly. like, he exactly. says he wants to go off on his own and, <laughs> and the, the hardest part was you had to look as an actor you had to look at the actor at, you know the ventriloquist yeah. you're not supposed to look at the dummy but the voice is coming from the, the actor <laughs> that must have been so hard to not just crack up and break up well, because you're known for that great deadpan, you know, but like uh, to to not react to this dumb this dummy telling me he wants to walk. I'm crying, laughing, just talking about it. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and then of course, real quick, new, then New Heart was the other show from 1982 to to 1990, and you played that Vermont innkeeper Dick Loudon, one one of the all time great shows, and of course, one of the all time great series finales that everyone talks about. You know, where where the town is bought by this tycoon and turned into his golf course, and you and your wife decide to stay in the inn, but of course, it's in the middle of the golf course with balls flying. You get hit by the golf ball, and people yelling quiet, all that stuff, and then of course, you wake up to just the famous just a dream we've seen repeated so many times but uh, me memories of what of you know when you first read the script of that finale and and did you know it was going to go down as an all-time finale when you read it uh, oh, oh yeah it was um well it was my wife's idea as a matter of fact <laughs> uh, it was we we were we were in the sixth year i think of new heart and um they were moving us CB, uh, cbs was moving us around different time slots and uh, I, I didn't think it was right. I, I thought the show we established at nine o'clock on Monday night as a as a hit time slot, and I thought that they should leave it there. So we we're going to a Christmas party, and um, I, we were waiting in line to get a picture taken. And I said to my wife, I said, you know, I think this is going to be the last year. Of, of the show. I said, because, you know, CBS, uh, I don't like the way they're treating the show. Uh, the show has been good for them. And um, I don't like the way it's being treated. And she said right there in line, without a, a, a second, mo mo uh, you know, uh, pause, uh, she said, you ought to end the show on a, on a dream sequence. <laughs> because there's so many, you know, inexplicable people. Uh, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. You know, yeah. they they were right out of deliverance. And what, what are they? What are they doing in Vermont? You know, <laughs> and of course, all the townspeople and Tom Poston. And uh, I said, honey, that's a great idea. So uh, I settled the problems with CBS. So in the eighth year, the final year. Um, I gave it to the writers, and they they came up with a script on the on the golf course, and uh, yeah, we still hear about that. Oh, it, it is one of the greats. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those memories. That uh, I mean, they, they I'm just smiling ear to ear, remembering and thinking about yeah. those episodes. <laughs> Jason, Jason, before I leave, I gotta I gotta mention a dear friend. He he was a senator from Vermont, uh, where where the um, the Newhart show was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, developed, and um, and Pat is retiring now, and, uh, and we're losing one of the great senators, uh, Senator Pat Leahy from Vermont. Oh well, well that's great that while we were talking about the Vermont innkeeper there, your character that you give a shout out to an actual Vermont. Uh, figure there so yes i'm thanks for making time for that and personally on a personal note i know we're bring, we're gonna wrap it back around to elf here to close it out but i wanted to thank you for voicing another voice of my childhood uh bernard in disney's rescuers <laughs> you know, rescue aid society we can still sing <laughs> and rescuers yeah. down under but uh, I, I heard they're re-releasing that oh really i didn't know that oh great that's fantastic 
Um, and of course, Ava Gabor is Miss Bianca. As a kid, I called it Miss Binaka, like the breath freshener. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but it's Bianca. <laughs> but any memories of that really quick before we go? You know, what was it? I mean, you're going to be not only Elf, but also Rescuers. You're too iconic I mean, uh, children's we, role. I don't know how much time we have, but um, <clears throat> the interesting thing, you know, you're, you're it's just your voice. So we'd go, we'd do four or five pages and then they'd animate it and then we go in. So it'd be maybe two, three months and you'd be back there and, and they say, okay, so let's see. Uh, okay. You, uh, you just flown on the back of an albatross <laughs> from uh, DC to Louisiana. And I said, right. So how do you think you, you'd feel? I, I said, well, probably tired, you know, flying in the back of an albatross from all the way from. <laughs> we have these very serious discussions. Yeah. <laughs> I had to bite my lip, you know. How do you play that with your, yeah. They're, they're like, hey, now pretend you were on an arbitrage. Like, how do I play that with my voice? I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to sound tired, I guess. Uh, well, I you've been more than generous with your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, but we want, every, we want to invite everyone to check out uh, Elf again this holiday season. Uh, and Will Ferrell has a, a new uh, um, Christmas Carol movie uh, out now, too, that's really good called Spirited. He, he's still doing great stuff. But um, check out Elf. 20 years ago, it went into production. And um, just final final seconds, Mr. Newhart. Like, when all the, when you add all this up, from Elf to the sitcoms, and when you add it all up and look back on it, you know, when you finally hang up your cap, like, what do you want people to remember you by? Just, you know, bringing laughter in a time where of, of conflict and, and serious? Like, you know, it, it's important to make people laugh. I mean, what, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I mean, when you devote a career to making people laugh, I mean... What better thing in the world is that, you know? Um, no, I feel very good about my career. And one of the greatest sounds in the world is laughter. And uh, I fell in love with it the first time I heard it. And uh, 60 years later, I was still doing it. <laughs> I love it. And 93 years later, you're still doing it. <laughs> well... <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, the legendary Bob Newhart. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jason. All right. Be well. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. Our theme music is Scott Buckley's Clarion. Remember to give us a five-star rating if you like what you hear. We'll see you next time. Explain your DNA on, on 10 cases, man. You're inside the police interrogation room with the alleged Potomac River rapist. I'm not guilty on any of this stuff. So calm, so reasonable. Could this be the man who terrorized women for nine years before murdering a brilliant scientist two decades ago? Experience one of the most fascinating true crime podcasts available. Join crime reporter Paul Wagner for Unknown Subject, season three of WTOP's American Nightmare series. Search American Nightmare Podcast on all podcast platforms. I wanted to take a second to tell you about an app I really enjoy. Living in the D.C. area is great, and Podcast D.C. gathers all of the local shows that I like all in one local app. Health, sports, local news, politics, and so much more. Podcast D.C. is the new local app with hundreds of D.C. area podcasts to choose from. I can earn exciting rewards just for listening and share the podcasts I love instantly. Available in the App Store or in Google Play, listen local with Podcast D.C.